What's happening, everybody? So you should have just finished reading an article where I broke down three different Affilio stacks and talked about Affilios' versatility and everything he has going for him. So today's video is going to be a quick gameplay session. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of the Victor Affilio stack that uh, is popping. It's really fun. Use Ballistic Bot, uses Cygnus to give Ballistic Bot elusive, or even uses Infernum to give uh, elusive Bot overwhelm. Once you do that, you can really start just punishing your opponent. And putting through lots of damage. So we have uh, Twist of Fate TF, and again, we're running Victor Filios. So let's see how it goes. Definitely not a bad starting hand. I mean, the curve of Duskbringer to Sky Shadows to Aphilios is pretty, uh, pretty nuts. So like I said before in the article, if you did come straight from that, the, um, the point of this is we do want to play Ballistic Bot and even use Aphilios to get... An additional Ballistic Bot using Crescendum. That's a really solid card to get Ballistic Bot out. You play all these created cards between the weapons and um, ignitions and just level up Victor really quickly and get a lot of damage through on these Ballistic Bots. I'm going to see what our opponent decides to do. Looks like he's getting some elusive guys. We'll put some pressure on. We'll attack. Our 3 1's really just a unit on curve. To apply a little bit of pressure, that's all. So, got an elusive off the board. I'm happy with it. <laughs> Alright, so we could drop uh, Aphilios with Dusk Petal. And then we'll have two mana left to use uh, Crescendum. So, I'm going to choose Crescendum. So, Crescendum can be, uh, could make Calibrum, which is the deal through damage, or Severum, which is the lifesteal. But he is going right for the kill on that, so he'll obviously get that kill. We'll still use Crescendum, and we'll still try to cast uh, Calibrum for phasing, in case we see a second Aphilios. So we got an Elusive, which is pretty good against uh, Fizz and Twisted Fate. They have a lot of good Elusive stuff over there. Uh, he's on turn 4, so we're expecting maybe a Twisted Fate with blue card. So we'll just play Ballistic Bot now. If he plays Twisted Fate, he can't really block that. It's a little bit too ballsy to block uh, anything on this side. So Twisted Fate blue card is what we expect it. Could be a problem if he levels up, so we're going to have to try to put a little bit more pressure on. We don't have a ton of cards that target direct damage to non uh, to champion units. We obviously have Calibrum from the weapons that can deal 3 to a follower, but we don't do a ton to champions. One thing we can do is use Spacey Sketcher to try to grab the uh, really important Serpent to deal that damage through. So we might try that. So Ignition's really good in this deck because it is a really nice Nightfall trigger as well. So I deal one to the Nexus, and then I can easily just play my Crescent Guardian next, which is super strong. Get my character off right away. Uh, Star Sheeping here is going to be a little too slow. I don't think we'll be taking a whole lot of Nexus damage right away. All right, so we're going to go with this. Uh, Equinox isn't bad to silence one of these big Ignition bots. Right off the bat, but the Messenger, when our hand is this dead, could be pretty good as well. And we even kind of want to get the Cloven Way out at some point soon. Definitely not Moon Glow. I'm torn between Messenger and Silence a Follower. We're going to go Messenger just because of how our hand is currently looking. It's looking a little bit shallow at the moment. So he's going to pass turn to me. So we have another Spacey Sketcher, which is nice. I'm going to go with the Ignition to start. Build him up a little bit. Ideally, want to get Cloven Way. He has Overwhelm printed on his board, so we want to get that going. Um, Twisted Fate is at 5 now. Normally, they level off of playing Pick a Card, his spell. If he does level, I can Hush to get that out. But we want to get some damage through. Uh, so we're going to Cloven Way, and we're going to stun one of the Ballistic Bots here. So it'll be stunned for this turn and the next turn, which is nice. If he does start removing some of my units, we can use Spacey Sketcher on Hush and then try to even put more pressure through. So we're kind of all in on this pressure game right now. He has another Ballistic Bot. So we're just going to send everything. We want to put as much damage through as possible. They don't have any healing, so we need to deal damage ASAP. We have two 5 attack units with Overwhelm, which is nice. He's got two blockers with three health, but it's still good to get Ballistic Bots off the board. And if he wants to trade a champion, he can do that all day. But we're going to try to just keep pushing through with damage here. be very surprised if he lets my Ignition Bot live through this turn. 
So right now this is one, two, three, four, five, and five. So that's 10 damage right now that's showing. It's a little bit less, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And he's going with a Mystic Shot. So we get both Ballistic Bots off the board. The other one's stunned for a while. Twisted Fate's going to be our real problem here. Uh, I don't really want to play Spacey Sketcher because I do want to save Hush. Hush is actually important. Um, he's pick a carding here for Twisted Fate. So Twisted Fate's going to level up. Once he starts using his cards, I'm going to want to Hush that so he can't go too crazy um, and you know blow up my entire board here. So Twisted Fate obviously becomes a pretty big problem. And we might hush him on my my turn when I'm attacking so I can get that damage through if I can keep my board big enough to actually matter. Really is good that we're getting another Ignition here, though. That's really solid. The Sky Shadows kind of falls off later. Um, you know, we behold plenty of Nightfall cards because we have a bunch out on the board. But he doesn't help a whole lot beyond that. So, yeah, he's drawing a card. That is just happening. We have one damage here. His whole scheme is going to happen. I kind of just have to accept it. This thing's going to take two damage. The red card's going to kill a lot. My next turn, I'm going to have to silence him and try to push through some damage here. So we're going to try to slow play for now. We'll just drop an ignition here. So the red card comes out. Play the messenger, try to get some more card. Another ignition bot's really solid. Uh, if it can live into the next turn, that'll be a extra damage that I will get, which is really great. So like I said, the sky shadows is not really that important right now, so we'll drop that and we're gonna go for the messenger again because we just want to see a couple more cards. And our Nexus being at 18 is pretty nice. We got plenty of health, which is great. And the Fangs is a pretty good card. But he is going to put out lots of damage here. This is what this deck does, right? It's all trying to combo out for this last final turn here. Uh, Ballistic Bot, I think, is safe at this point. So we have him down to three, which is going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough. He's probably going to have removal for my overall unit here, so it's not going to happen through that. So it is going to be tough to finish off this Nexus here. I mean, I can hush the Twist of Fate on my turn to stop the damage being done to Crescent Guardian from Red Card, but he probably has a, you know, Get Excited or a Mystic Shot or something. So he's going for the Elusive Kill, so he's trying to push damage through... Um, now, if that's his only removal card that he used, that is ballsy. So we obviously can chump block this. We don't need this here. But we are going to take a solid amount of damage. So he only lost that card, which is pretty bad. Um, so we really don't have too many options other than to just go for that overwhelm damage. He most likely has damage to stop this. So we're just going to try to punch it through. We most likely won't get it here. Uh, any removal will stop it, but... This thing doing just two damage to the Nexus means I win with Ignition. So he doesn't. He has to have something in hand to stop this. And there's a very slight chance he doesn't, but it's not high. Definitely not a high chance. But regardless, trading the Elusive is what I had to do anyway this turn. We can get another Elusive blocker up. I think it might just be too little too late at that point. Uh, he doesn't have anything to kill it, so we do get him down to one health. Uh, we have the ignition in hand. So unless he is double mystic shotting my nexus right now, or or a double get excited my nexus, I mean, or trolling me, I'm not really sure. But showing lethal, I can't think of any healing that they run, so I think we should be good. Unless he needed to do that first, and now he can do a get excited mystic shot on top of this. Possibly that could be his answer. Or no, he just doesn't have the answer. Sometimes it's how it works. They don't have it. So we got just enough damage through with that uh, one turn that we had, and the Ballistic Bots just kept chipping away at the Nexus. So deck worked out pretty well there. Super tight game, though. So we'll run one more for this. So the other decks in the article, um, win an Ephemeral deck, that's just a lot of fun. Uh, it really is all about Crescendum, just getting out 
the uh, Evershade Stalker or even uh, the Shark, just so you can get Shark Chariots and just kind of going nuts. But this deck is a little bit more flexible. Uh, and this is two curves back to back that are really solid, right? Uh, and we even got the Veiled Temple this time. So th this should be a pretty fun curve that we're going to have here. Uh, but we always have to worry about, you know, Teemo Sejuani is pretty ridiculous. So sometimes they can pop off. Don't see a Teemo yet, which is nice. Um, we got a Ballistic Bot here, but we want to play Sky Shadow. So again, like, the Ignition works so well with Veiled Temple and things like that. It's just such a solid just engine for nightfall decks and in general but also with this new landmark it's just so solid to start up your turn with an, a nice ignition just to really get things going so we got a puff cat peddler i mean not feeling too bad we didn't take any damage yet or anything um i'm gonna block this even if i do get you know some type of healing you know if, if he uses a troll chant or something that's fine i just don't want to give him any nexus damage for free when he's trying to level up sejuani that's the point of his deck and eventually he's going to have to use his combat tricks. It's just what they do. And this 3-1, like I said, he's really all about just kind of hitting the table as a curve unit. Giving you spell mana so you can do something a lot cooler on turn 4. So we're going to get to see some nice uh, Veiled Temple action. I mean, that's pretty annoying to draw a Shroom out of 3. But we're going to see some nice Veiled Temple action, hopefully. Uh, so all i got to do is play 2 cards. And then it'll give my strongest ally plus 1, plus 1. So I'll play Ignition here first. So this will be my first card. The second card I play is going to give my strongest ally plus one plus one. And also I'll gain two mana back. And it's not spell mana. It's just two mana, which is really nice. So what I can actually do right now is play this here. And then this Veil Temple just gave him plus one plus one now at burst speed. So now his Thermogenic Beam doesn't actually even kill me. Super nice. Uh, and then I can even play this now because I got two mana back. And now it costs only two after playing the Dusk Petal. So super strong card there he uh could get the free trade on ballistic bot if he wants to um but we're gonna put the pressure on yes this trade makes sense the reason i attacked with ballistic bot is just so i can get four more damage through putting down the five health on turn four is ridiculously absurd so uh i'm all about that sounds great to me we got a decent hand not a ton of extra damage you know he's gonna start doing puff cap shenanigans it's just gonna happen but again, we're doing our thing. We're going to play uh, Ignitions. We're going to slowly grind out the Nexus. And I don't know if I even know if I can really say slowly once I just did uh, that much damage. Um, he probably wants to do some combat tricks. I'm not worried at all about taking damage now when he's at 4 health. So I'm just going to accept the combat tricks. I'm going to play the Cloven Way, which is going to be really nice because he's going to stun this follower. But on top of that, he's going to stun him next turn for one less blocker, which is massive. On top of that, the Veiled Temple gave it plus one, plus one. It has Overrun built in, and we get to play another unit on top of that. So this is really showing off just how absurd the Veiled Temple can actually be. You don't really want two of them at any given time, but we're going to just open attack before we can do anything too crazy. He's got plenty of answers for this type of thing. He's got Harsh Winds and Brittle Steels and all that, but we're still going to attack with four units across the board. We can definitely burst speed out a hush, plus a pale cascade to get plus one damage, which is nice, but we'll see what he does. We have one more damage from Ignition coming through. His only healing that they run is the Tavern Keeper. He doesn't have three mana for that, so he's out of range for that now, which is great. But he is doing work here. He is putting us down pretty low. Uh, so we are actually getting no damage through, but we're trading the board, and we made him use all of those spells, which is fine. Uh, we are just going to Ignition here after this. And kind of go from there. So we're going to Ignition, get another damage, and then we're going to just hope that we're burning through all of his removal spells, all of his uh, damage slowing spells, and we can do things that way. So Healing 5 will be big in this as well. Uh, and then we're going to want something else that's solid. Um, we don't really have anything else in terms of Celestial, so the two cards that say Behold aren't going to find that much use. The uh, Veiled Temple just gave plus one there, and we could have gotten one damage there. If we wanted to Hush and then Pale Cascade, technically we, we could have got two damage through with that, because the plus one plus one would have went on this unit as that happened. Uh, actually, no, the strong unit at that point would have been the Ballistic Bot, so I take, I take that back. That would not have worked. So he's got that. So uh, the Fangs is really solid. We can get a really nice cheap unit like the Serpent to trigger even more things and get more damage through, so that's really nice. Uh, here, the overwhelm damage is only two. Um, do we need any mana? I don't think we do. We're going to hush it to try to not take this damage here. So she won't gain any level up condition. 
which is important because she would have been at five and could have froze my board next turn, which we definitely don't want. As you see, the Cloven Way has gotten bigger from the Veiled Temple, which is pretty nice. We don't need the second Veiled Temple, like I said before. So we're going to pitch that. We're going to have three mana left, so we're going to go with the Trickster here. And we'll just instantly replace the 1-1 one, one so we can have more damage coming through. Oh, and he's getting a copy of my Serpent, which is nice, so he can get an extra blocker, which is important for him. So we got to see how much stuff comes through. We do have Hushes on our own unit, so we could have done that before, and we might do it this turn as well. Uh, we don't care about the 3-2. We want to pull the biggest blocker out of the way so we can have the most Overwhelm damage. The Hush will silence my own Overwhelm, but it will get around the um, Frostbite as well. Could have been an option that other turn when I got Frostbitten that I maybe have missed. Um, so it's an option here as well if he decides to not block that. So he's got two more uh, freezing abilities here. Another Iter of Improvement doesn't really do anything too big there. I am very confused as to where these blockers are. Okay, it's, we got a little game glitch, but the Puff Cat Peddler is in front of the Cloven, as you can see. Um, so yeah, we're going to silence this here first. He'll uh, now go through, so it's three damage and two damage, so it's five total. And that's the game there. It was a little bit of a weird game glitch where the Puff Cat Peddler got like shifted to the right or whatnot. But that's essentially the deck, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. It's a really fun deck. It's got a lot of versatility. Uh, super solid, in my opinion. Um, if you guys enjoyed the article, you know, give us feedback. We really try to take it to heart and do whatever we can with it. So uh, we appreciate it. Thank you guys for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions on YouTube. It's been all wonderful to see. And uh, we plan to keep on making content here. So thanks for sticking by. Catch you next time.